What we're going to do now is take a little bit of the mystery out of the evaluation process. There's five steps in the process. The first process is figuring out if the client or the patient is going to accept the responsibility of being an active participant in their care. In this instance, we're going to assume that we've already had a consultation, we've already had taken a history, we've already done an interview to see if you're qualified or a candidate for care, and if you are, that means you have accepted the role of taking responsibility, and so you're not just going to come in and expect me to fix you. In this instance, like I said, we're going to assume Rebecca, my lovely wife, has um, accepted that responsibility. Okay, so we're going to, and the other thing, the fifth thing is the, um, the inflammation, the nu nutrition. We're not going to be talking about that. I'm just going to be showing you um, how, to do, how I look for blockages, how I assess muscle imbalances, and how we identify and um, address um, poor movement patterns, or the reprogramming concept we've already talked about. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little up, upper quarter evaluation here. We're going to start with a postural analysis. And what, stand up please, Rebecca. And what we're, going to, what we're going to do here is explain a few of the things that happen with disturbed upper body mechanics and posture. The things that come out of that are things like neck tension, headaches, um, the kind of headaches that go kind of behind your eyes or in your temples, class, classically called stress headaches. Some people think they're sinus headaches, but really they're just coming from trigger points in your muscles here. I'm going to show you a little bit about that. Um, um, carpal tunnel syndrome is also a, a, a big um, label that we get put on upper quarter dysfunction because your body kind of pinches down on the, all the nerves that go down into your, uh, into your wrist so you can get develop carpal tunnel syndrome. Um, you can develop uh, like I said, migraines and headaches. You can develop the mid-back pain, like the burning shoulder blade pain. You can develop shoulder problems themselves, like bursitis, tendonitis, impingement syndrome. Um, geez, have I missed any? I'm sure there's a label out there for a lot of things. Um, TMJ, the joint, the jaw, that's another thing that's just is a result of imbalanced muscles and blocked joints and poor movement patterns. And so that's what we're going to do. We're not going to work up any particular condition. We're just going to look for those three things. Blockages, muscle imbalances, and disturbed movement patterns. Okay, so the first thing we look at is posture. Uh, we would look at how much uh, girth or how much uh, activity we see in these muscles here. Um, you can see sometimes what this, what's referred to as gothic shoulders, if these muscles are overactive and tight. Rebecca's aren't too bad. There's a little bit of overactivity through here. Um, and uh, she has had some shoulder injuries in the past and has had some upper quarter and TMJ type problems. So yes, there's a little bit of dysfunction here, so she's going to be a good candidate for it. Um, but what we, what we want to look for here is we want to look for, we're going to watch her breathe. And she's going to take a breath in. And that breath, we saw the, the shoulder blades go, or the, excuse me, the clavicle rise. Do it again. And the, we do not want to see up and down movement of the clavicle. That indicates a dysfunctional breathing program. And if you have a dysfunctional breathing program, then you're overworking, really overworking all of these muscles on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. You take 14 to 22 breaths every single moment of every single day, and if you're breathing with any kind of overstress in your upper quarter, you're potentiating the problems like neck tension, muscle tension in your neck, headaches, and things like that. Because there's also trigger points in these muscles. The upper trapezius, for instance, has a trigger point in it when you press it. I've had many people come in complaining of what they thought were sinus headaches, and we I said, well, there's a trigger point right there in the upper trapezius. When I press that, does that reproduce your headache? And they said, yes, that's the headache that was I always thought was my sinus headache. And I've been taking antibiotics for years and years and years for that. And actually, one person actually taken antibiotics for 10 years for her sinus headaches. We released the trigger points, no more sinus headaches. So it happens a lot. So we need to evaluate posture is very, very important. And that breathing pattern is one of the movement patterns we look at. So this is, goes into the the movement programming. So breathing is a movement program. It's a program that you have sunk into your brain, into your lower brainstem, and you do that automatically. You don't think about it. So sometimes we have to reprogram a good breathing pattern. So, and that's part of the treatment process. We're not going to go through how to do all that. Just know that dysfunctional breathing is the number one problem that I see that is the cause of most upper quarter problems. OK? 
Okay? So breathing is in, so there's another example. I just took the breath in and up comes the clavicle. Okay? Proper breathing happens lower. And there's a way to assess that as well. We want to see if, you can just leave your arms down to your side, that's fine. And when she breathes in, we evaluate and look at whether her rib cage expands from down below. So you're going to take a breath in. And in this case, she's got training there, so she has that ability. Okay? So she's very trainable. Most people I see with this, especially with really bad headaches and things or upper cord problems, uh, there's, they don't even know how to do that. So um, it's a good self-test at home. Put your hands on your ribs like this and just breathe in. And if you don't feel any motion and any lateral expansion happening into your hands, then you've got a dysfunctional breathing program that needs to be treated. Okay? So that's, that's a very a crude example of how we address posture and breathing. So now we're going to go in and look for some muscle imbalances and uh, joint blockages. So lay back on your back. Lay back. Lay on your back. Okay? So one thing we look at first is with, with um, what's called upper cross syndrome, uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate that while she's sitting here. Okay, I'll keep a step in front of her. And with upper cross syndrome, uh, pretend I'm sitting at a desk and I'm poking my head at a desk all day, or at a computer monitor. And so my head goes forward, right? And my shoulders come forward. So this is the sedentary posture, the, the posture of daily living for a lot of people. And what do you do when you come home? Plop down on the couch and watch some television, okay? So we get in, we are, we are a sitting posture society, and it looks like this. It's a video game society. So, so we're in this posture all the time. Now, if you look at that posture, it's a, there's a very specific weakness and tightness pattern that occurs. And it's also the same pattern that occurs with... Um, with a spastic paresis like a cerebral palsy or polio, it's, a, it's the up and curled forward pattern. Although it's not as dramatic, that's what happens when our body gets under stress. It curls forward. And the, the cross posture pattern is this. If I'm forward here with my neck, I have lots of tightness here at my upper neck. Okay, So I'm tight here. And if you cross across my body, I'm also tight in my pectoral muscles, the ones that draw me forward. So I look like this. I'm over-exaggerating, but not for some people. Okay? So I have a tightness cross. Tight, tight, cross. And now, as a result of being tight here, the body likes to be in balance, so you have weakness here. So I have weakness. I'm unable to do that with my deep neck flexor muscles in the front because they've got so much darn tightness back here. So weakness here, and if you cross over into the back, you have weakness in your ability to pull your shoulder blades down. So we have a weak cross this way and a tight cross this way. So, so we have, what we have to do is we have to release the tightness, release the tightness, and then retrain the weakness. And then voila, things like the carpal tunnel syndrome and the headaches and things vanish. Okay? So, but we have to get it evaluated properly so we know whether we have these problems or not. So, and there also is a lower cross syndrome, but that's for another segment, okay? We're going to stick with the upper body right now. So with her back up, the first thing we're going to do is just find out how tight her chest is. So we're just going to let her arms relax and fall down. Now we should be able to get to about a 30, nice, easy 30 degree below the table feeling there. And she got a block at about 20 degrees, but it's not bad. Some people I'll see in here, and a lot of people, and especially if... If they're up in years and have had a lot of stress in their life for some reason, and they have maybe some chronic pain and things like that, um, it's not uncommon for me to see the muscles actually get tight right there and not even be able to get to um, uh, horizontal. So I consider it somewhat successful if we can at least get below the table. And Rebecca's got that. But, and then the other thing we have to look for is how far can she open her arm up? You know, some people with shoulder problems can't let their arm fall past here. So, or, and then we have to also check how tight the shoulder is the other way. So, now Rebecca has a tight posterior capsule here. So her shoulder joint isn't functioning very well. Okay, her shoulder joint isn't functioning very well. So, I would go in and treat that capsule and then show her some home exercises to be able to continue to treat that on her own. And if she has a tight, well, let's just demonstrate that. Go ahead and uh, stand up and face the wall. There you go. Now, 